Welcome back, folks. This is Jacob Shoup filling in for Tom O'Brien. I want you to take a look over at the screen here. We are taking a look at the opening call newsletter by Basil Chapman. Now, Basil just had a subscriber webinar last Tuesday. It was fantastic. In fact, let me check uh, the upload time. We have 98.5% uploaded on there. So get a subscription today. Get some Tiger dollars. You get a really uh, nice savings from that. And then you can watch that uh, webinar that he had last Tuesday. Uh, really excited to hear what you have to say today. Basil, how are you doing? Hi, Jacob. How are you doing? I'm fine, thank you. I'm doing well. I'm doing well. What are we looking at? Well, we're looking at the Dow chart. On the left here is the Dow daily. On the right, in the middle, is the weekly chart. And on the right is the monthly chart. We're about to wrap up the month of Ju July. And you can see on the right here, this is the monthly candle so far for July. The day is young. The month is young because we still have Microsoft coming out after the bell. That's going to be important. So here we go. The monthly chart so far is extremely bullish, and we've gone very quickly. In the Chapman Wave, we're always looking for at least four higher peaks, and I alphabetize them A, B, C, D, but they can go to E, F, and G. But most importantly, I like to look at the technicals to see if there's a confirmation that the buy mode is still in place. Well, I need the nine-period moving average way above the 14, and you can see here in the monthly chart, the price is way above the nine, and this is the green line, and the green line is way above the 14, that's a very good sign. <clears throat> the MACD, the moving average convergence divergence, is strong. It's not overly bought. Uh, it didn't overbought. On the left, it got overbought at the 36,952 high back in January of 22 before it plunged down to the 28,660 level. We did get long a position. We've been long from uh, 2020 and uh, March. And then October of 2022, uh, we got long and we've been long. And we have trading positions within that. So that's the down. <clears throat> Most importantly, the weekly chart has got this double U formation, like a W. And the MACD has crossed positive after being negative. And the stochastic is not at 80%. It's at 77%. So it's a little underperforming. But the price has held very well. The weekly chart <clears throat> has made this cup formation. And you can see here as well, the nine period is over the 14. That's very good. And the MACD has just barely crossed positive, And the relative strength is, is good, not great. So the 914 is really the benchmark here that tells me that there's still internal strength. And we are long, so we're looking for higher prices. Now, what's really interesting, <clears throat> I'm just going to get a drink of water, if you don't mind. Absolutely. All right. Does that smooth things out a little bit? OK. <laughs> <laughs> so what we've got is there's a huge divergence. I've been talking about this for weeks and weeks. I've said there's a really good chance that the Dow 30, just at this moment, this particular phase, is quite, it has U.S. companies represented in the Dow. It's not in the Dow Industrials anymore, though they call it that. It's really the Dow 30. And as such, it's got important components within that. It's got insurance, it's got everything. So what's really important about this is that the price is holding quite well. It needs to go a little higher for me to feel comfortable, but so far this is good action on the daily chart. Now, what I've been talking about is that there's a divergence between the semiconductors, which have been negative for some time, made an all-time high of 283.07, and it's made this round trip with this cup formation, and then it failed, and now it's broken through the left side low of 234 way back in uh, end of May, beginning of June. And it's now at this little trough right here that's on the 17th of May of uh, this year. And that's at 228.62. And we're at 230.50 right now. We have gone down to the 228.33 level. That's important. So it tells me that a, a pretty key component of the general market, which is the semiconductors, which I always say kind of guides the market up and guys, the market down, and generally the market follows. That's important because together with this, we've got the S&P rather weak. You can see right here. Uh, it's just holding support in the weekly chart. That's going to be important to hold. And the QQQ, which is which has the uh, semiconductors in it. Whoops, one, two, three. I, I did it four. Um, is dropping quite sharply, and the weekly mm -hmm. chart now looks quite quite poor. So it says to me there's very selective strength. Where's the strength? 
And I keep talking about it's like the, the scales of justice. On the one side, you've got this, and the other side, you've got that. Sometimes one is bigger than the other. They try to balance out. So what we've got is the, the Dow is showing strength. The S&P is showing some weakness. The um, QQQ is showing some strength, uh, showing, showing weakness. But we've got the IWM that's been taking its place. And I've spoken about this actually for weeks now, saying that I think that there's going to be a, a rotation in this market. And that's the first time we've seen that, even though the semis are coming down, semiconductors, which are really important, we've got money going into another area. And that area is the small caps. And if you look at the IWC, which is the the um, the Russell 1000, I don't, let me just, sorry, the IWB, the Russell 1000, that went to all-time highs on the 16th of July and is pulling back. So now you're seeing that the former winners are taking a breather and the the what the the stocks that were in the indices that were lagging are starting to rally some. So that's important to me. Uh, within that context, we've uh, we've got Microsoft from the 338 level for quite some time since uh, October the 31st. We've had it in trading positions, but there's I don't want to go through this now. I discussed it. I think with Tom it was last week. I'll do some of it more. Uh, tomorrow because we'll have the earnings after the bell. Right. But it's it's had a fabulous move. It's a pattern that I call the stalk leg formation. Just there's a long leg, then there's an oval body, then there's a neck, then there's the beak. We're in the beak phase. We had a big bounce off the, the low that was made just recently. Now it's gone back to this sharp move down. And Microsoft is in the Dow, it's in the S&P, it's in the uh, QQQ, it's in the XLK, the S&P Select Spider, and the AIQ. So it's really important, and it's had a fantastic move. It's in this digestive phase. So it's going to mean that if whatever the news is, tomorrow is really the day. Whatever happens overnight, it's really what happens tomorrow between, say, 10 and 11 o'clock sure. in the morning. I'll discuss that during my show. But I think it is due for a rest. It'll be fabulous if it could balance but it does deserve a rest after being such a fantastic winner. So this is a very select market right now. You can even see that in the, uh, uh, for instance, we have a, a gold, a silver stock, which should technically with silver tanking like it has, this has held very well so far. Can it continue? <clears throat> well, that's the question. Uh, there's a core mining CDE. It's held very well. And that's really what's interesting about this market. The stocks that have held well seem to have held hold, uh, holding, even though the, the other components within the sector pull back. So it's individual stock selection that's really important. And it's, it's the way we're trading. And we've built up a cash position. We are looking forward. That's why I had the webinar the other day. We've built up a, right. a, a, a list of stocks that we would really like to be buying, waiting for a pullback. And they are ranging from single digits to triple digits. It's just a real mix of, of, of different areas. For instance, SWK, Black & Decker, it was doing nothing. It was Stanley Black & Decker. It, it went from 220 down to the 70s, and it was do, just messing around. Suddenly today, it's up 9%. So I think the laggards are really the ones that are going to show some strength. Yeah, and, and you go over all that. I mean, talking about sector rotation it, uh, during your webinar on Tuesday, it was fantastic. Yes. So, folks, if you want to check that out, all you have to do is subscribe to the opening call newsletter. If you don't like it, if it's your first time subscribing, you get a 30-day money-back guarantee, no problem at all. Basil, thank you so much. We're looking forward to hearing uh, from you at 10 a.m. tomorrow morning. Thank you, Jacob. Take care, folks. Stay right there.